So the nitrogen cycles would allow us to keep all of our fish, aquatic organisms, things of that nature that live in water alive. Whether or not we know about it or whether or not we can see it, it's there and it's what allows us to keep these fish in glass boxes. So I want to sort of start with where everything sort of went wrong in my opinion and then work our way forward with those established building blocks. Initially, you might not understand everything that's being said or everything that's happening, so I'd encourage you guys to stick with it and to come back to this video as you guys progress along in understanding the nitrogen cycle inside of aquariums and a more detailed explanation of where everything comes from and how everything ends up being something else within the aquarium. And for those that want to take a deeper dive into this or want to you know, fact check me, I'll leave all the articles that I am referencing and pulling my information from down in the description below and you guys can go ahead and learn more about it at your leisure. So right out the gate, for us to better understand the nitrogen cycle, we sort of had to understand where ammonia comes from within the aquatic systems, particularly pertaining to fish. So fish, contrary to what most people think, don't release the majority of their ammonia or their waste as pee or poop, but rather they excrete pure ammonia from their gills passively into the surrounding waters. And I'll sort of detail it up here and continue talking about it as we go through. So this ammonia, if we want to start backtracking it, comes from the feed that we feed our fish. And that feed has protein in it, and that protein is used to create amino acids for our fish, which then can synthesize those into proteins. And those proteins are then utilized and broken down, and those proteins are then processed back into amino acids and then into ammonia in the liver, and then they become free ammonia within the fish's bloodstream. And inside the fish's bloodstream, ammonia readily diffuses and dissolves into it. So it's, it can move around freely within the blood system because it's just how its actual chemical nature is. So if we have a high amount of ammonia on the inside of the fish and a low amount on the exterior, what the ammonia is going to do is it's going to passively diffuse through the gills into the water and then is taken away out into the water column, which can then be digested and broken down by bacteria. So it relies upon a gradient scale, a concentration scale. So it's relying upon moving from a high to a low area of concentration. And that's how they diffuse their ammonia. But now if the situation was reversed and we had a large amount of ammonia out here and a small amount of ammonia inside the fish relative one to one another, you're going to have issues of fish dying from ammonia poisoning because they can no longer passively diffuse this ammonia into the environment because there's already too much here. If anything, more ammonia is going to want to come from the water back into the fish. So then you start having all the issues that you have with ammonia. That's a whole other video and a whole other topic, but most of it has to deal with the central nervous system uh, and issues of that nature that can ultimately lead to the death of the fish. So now you know where ammonia comes from and how it's actually excreted from the fish, we can move into how the nitrogen cycle actually occurs once we have this ammonia. Because this ammonia is the very first block of what we commonly understand the nitrogen cycle within the aquariums that we keep. All right, so at a very basic level, we just have ammonia inside of the water column, and we'll just leave it here as this, and it just gets converted magically into NO3, which is nitrate. And you know, so long as you know that you have to have bacteria that is up here that is converting the ammonia to nitrite, to nitrate, or rather not even this stuff, from just from the ammonia to the nitrate, then that's a very good starting place. But one better would be going back a little bit more and adding in a second stage, which is it is from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. And this is happening because of bacteria. And you have a relationship between the amount of ammonia that goes in corresponds to the amount of nitrate that you produce. And I can't remember the exact numbers off the top of my head, but I think it's like one part of ammonia leads to three parts of nitrates. I will probably clear that up in the show notes once I go back and look over my notes to make sure I'm correct with that assumption. The next step past here is that you have bacteria, nitrosomonas, and nitrobacter that are converting and utilizing the ammonia and the nitrite as an energy source and are then converting it to less and less harmful products. So this is very bad. We'll do double, triple, quadruple X. 
This we would say is probably triple X and this is probably X, meaning that a very small amount of ammonia is going to kill fish equally to the same amount, a larger amount of nitrite and then an even larger amount of nitrate. So this is where I feel where most people leave off is this is how the typical nitrogen cycle is, is this interaction between bacteria and ammonia, nitrite, nitrate. But in recent years in uh, scientific papers, it is actually more accurate, whoopsies, it is actually more accurate that we don't know necessarily what is doing this. There are a couple papers out there that I'll leave linked in the show notes below that talk about how nitrosomos and nitrobacts aren't the only bacteria that are actually doing nitrification. There's a lot of other bacteria that are also aiding in the nitrification process besides these. So the idea that we know exactly what is at each one of these stages isn't necessarily true. And we'll sort of go through now the entirety of the nitrogen cycle. And uh, I'm going to take a moment to put everything up and then we'll go through and work through it together. All right, so now that we have everything up here, we can sort of go through the entire process, starting off with our nitrogen. Our nitrogen gets fixed by different types of bacteria, whether it is in the soil or in nodules on plant roots, into ammonia, ammonium, depending on where it is. And that is then utilized by plants and other organisms to create organic matter. And that organic matter um, can then be either consumed by other organisms in the forms of proteins and things of that nature, or once those are no longer used, they get broken down into waste back into NH4, and then NH3, NH4, depending on the environment again. And then from there, we have that going to NO2 to NO3, nitrite to nitrate via bacteria. And it can be different bacteria and different uh, niches within different systems that you have. It's not necessarily going to be nitrosomonas and nitrobacter. And at NO3, this is actually the preferred form of fertilizers we'd commonly call it for plants so that fertilizer more or less can be integrated into plant matter and removed from our system and those nitrate molecules are going to be used to create amino acids which are then used to create proteins and other things of that nature the other route that we can go once we have nitrate is it can be removed from the system via water changes or it can be removed from the system by denitrification, mainly through usually anaerobic bacteria that are heterotrophic bacteria that use the nitrate and nitrite as electron acceptors to convert it back to N2 gas. And it can go directly from NO3 to N2 or NO2 to N2. So that is just a very comprehensive look of how everything comes from. So what does this entire cycle mean for us as aquarium keepers? Well, I think the biggest thing that should be stressed is that the ammonia that we're getting from isn't just magically appearing out of anywhere, but rather it's coming from the proteins inside of the fish food that we are feeding the fish that are then getting converted into ammonia and passively excreted through the gills into their water environment and being converted by different types of bacteria depending on you know the temperature, the pH of your system itself. And then being converted into nitrate, which is a, a much less toxic form in comparison to ammonia and nitrite. And at um, the nitrate level, you can either have plants remove that from your system for you, you can have bacteria convert that back into N2 gas, or you can do water changes to remove that NO3 from your system. Now, when it comes to water changes, this is a very uh, hot topic, but basically what you're trying to do if you are having rising nitrate levels, either due to no plants or you're not going down the denitrification route, which is I wouldn't recommend if you are just starting, uh, you're going to have to start looking at how much of a percentage of a water change removes how much a percentage of my nitrate. So to keep things simple, if we have a, oh gosh, I have a mustache hair, oh. So to keep things simple, if we have 100 milligrams per liter of nitrate with our water, which is high, and we want to reduce that, and we have, you know, scheduled a 50% water change, and we remove 50% of that water and fill it back up with clean water that has no nitrate back in it, we would have now 50 milligrams of nitrate within our system of water. But saying that the amount of fish food that we're putting into our fish is ending up converting into, you know, 70 grams of nitrate over the course of a week and we slowly start increasing our amount. So the next week we have 120 and we would do half and we go to 60. 
and we add another 70, we go up to 130. We do half, we go down to 65, and we slowly start continually creeping up even though we're doing water changes. And if you don't keep up with these water changes, you don't have it being removed from plant material, fish, because they are in an aquatic environment, can't walk away or swim away from the problem in the tank of like our size. Whereas we, if we were having you know, problems with the air, we can move away from it. They are confined to that area. So if we don't address the high amounts of ammonium nitrite or nitrate within our systems, those levels will potentially become toxic to our fish. Um, and there are plenty of studies out there that show that the actual tolerance of nitrate within fishes can range anywhere from 100 to 300 upwards, depending on the species uh, and how much they can tolerate before it starts having chronic issues on the fish, meaning that it slowly starts causing issues over a longer period of time. Given all of this information, where should we keep our levels inside of our fish tanks? Well, with ammonia, you probably are going to want to keep it usually between 0 to 0 0.25, 0 0.5. If you're having continuous levels of 0.5, you either have something leaching from your system or you're killing off your bacteria or things of that nature that are preventing it from being converted. And that's a, an adri a issue that you have to address and it's a whole nother video to talk about how to address that. With nitrite, we normally in aquaculture are concerned when it starts getting above one, which is usually above what we typically want in an aquarium, which is zero. So if you're between zero and 0.5, you're probably also in the clear. As well as with nitrate, we can run our systems depending on the aquatic organisms uh, from 40 to 300 and not have issues with our culturing of them. In an aquarium, you probably want to keep it at the high end, anywhere between 180. Uh, and that's where you, that would be the upper limits you probably want to go and probably want to reduce it through water changes or through plants removing that nitrate from the water column. The biggest things that you're hopefully taking away from this is that ammonia doesn't come from fish poop and fish pee, it comes from ammonia being passively released through the gills of the fish into the water column. That nitrosomonas and nitrobacter, while they can convert nitrite and nitrate or convert ammonia to nitrite to nitrate, they aren't necessarily always the bacteria that are going to be doing that conversions. And that ammonia doesn't kill because it's such a high amount in the water column per se, it's, so, it's because the ammonia is building up within the fish's system and that is what's going to kill them because they can't passively diffuse that into the system. And hopefully you guys can sort of better understand the entire nitrogen cycle as it is and how it relates to our aquariums and where everything comes from. Again, normally we are starting off at this stage here where we're getting proteins into the aquarium via our fish food and that fish food is getting converted into ammonia waste by the fish and is being converted to nitrite and then nitrate and then is either being removed via plant accumulation or assimilation through water changes, removing it from the system or denitrification where we are using other types of bacteria normally anaerobic bacteria to break down the nitrite from the nitrate to the nitrite and the nitrite to N2 gas again. Hope you guys have a blessed day. See you guys in the next one. Oh, check out one of the videos at the end.